Hey, what's up guys? Just giving you a little quick look on what's going on with my tanks. And um, just showing you guys that everything's doing well. Everything's doing fine. You can see fish are doing good. Corals are doing good. Corals are doing great. Everything's growing. It keeps on growing. That's what it is when you have stability. You know, you got a few corals like this little Nephnia here. A little disturbed, but that's okay. He's going to open up. They always do that once in a while. They just close up and then they open up and they drop more of that stuff down there that's just floating around the bottom there. And it's just, you know, life. The enemy's doing good. Clownfish are loving it. These guys are about 10 years old, man. 10 years old. Had them for 10 years already. It's great. They're doing well. Even that little black and white damsel I got in this tank is about 10 years. It's kind of cool. But uh, overall, things are growing. I've been taking things out. I've been encrusting and fragging and stuff like that. And it's been doing good. So yeah, so the only issue is in this tank is just this one SPS up on top. Now you can see it's got some bleaching going on on the bottom there. So it's STNing. So it's just a slow tissue loss that's occurring here. It's not rapid, it's not RTNing. It's STN. So it's just basically, what I'm gonna have to do is just frag this guy out. I'm gonna try to save the top piece there, maybe that little branching piece there and just put it on a frag plug and just Restick them maybe somewhere over there in that area, probably in the back there and stuff, and see if he can just uh, come back. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place a torch coil here, like on the bottom area here, and just, you know, probably some sort of a yellow gold torch of some sort, and just bring a little bit more color into the tank. And, you know, I kind of would like to see a little bit of, you know, movement there. So I'm going to put a torch coil there. And you know it's, it's just everything else is doing fine so if everything else is doing fine there's no reason to you know start doing water changes and start doing this and start creating instability if one coral is doing not so well but the others are doing fine and then i'm just going to leave things alone and i test and my alkalinity levels are fine my calcium levels are good magnesium and all that everything's fine the alkalinity in this tank in this system here is about an 8.2 8.2 my calcium levels in here are about 458 459 you know they kind of just stay around the same same uh parameters and um my magnesium levels are about 1250 12 1280 somewhere around there you know close to the 1300 but it's just about that that mark right there and um you know, other than that, you know, uh, let's see if we go down here. Hold on, we can see what what's going on. And stuff. So you can see my pH is saying 8.2 down here. So I got a pH monitor there, and um, you can see what's what's going on there. And I'm dosing magnesium sulfate, and I got the. Red Sea Nopox, the NO3 PO4, right there, in the back there, you know, just to help create, help with some algae management. Protein skimmer, nitrate reactor, you know, you can see the bio balls right there, or the bio, I mean bio pellets. And I got a bag of carbon right there also. Same setup, same recipe, same thing going on in all my, all three of my tanks. All the systems seem to like it. You know, I just, all of them are just adjusted to the amount of consumption that each tank is, is, is from each system basically is being uh, dosed differently. It's just accordingly to whatever the consumption rate is in each tank. That's what I'm trying to say. I got tongue twisted there, sorry. But um, you can see there's uh, the drip rate here is not like the drip rate in the office, very much slower. You can see the effluentant line right there is the blue line there. And yeah, there's a lot of spaghetti in here, but it's all it's all good. And um, 
this line here is basically my trace elements. Even though I got a calcium reactor, I still dose trace elements. And I still dose alkalinity. So, you know, I'm still dosing that. You come over here. You see the calcium reactors here. Okay. Right now it's at 6.6 .6 in the calcium reactor. It goes up to like 6.7, 6.8. The solenoid engages and then the carbon's released into the reactor and drops the pH back down to a 6.5. And calcium and alkalinity and all that stuff and trace elements are coming out of the reactor, but I do dose trace elements. I do the Nuyois trace elements and I do dose boron and alkalinity also. And I only dose uh, two millimeters of alkalinity. Boron is just one millimeter a day. Alkalinity is two millimeters a day. I don't dose the iodide. Every two weeks, I dose one millimeter of iodide in, in all my systems. And that's it, every two weeks. Um, Acro power is being dosed 15 millimeters a day in my system. And uh, yeah, the trace elements are, I don't know if I said that, but two millimeters a day. And if you wanna know what else I'm dosing, if you wanna kinda of know the recipe of this system, let me see, here, let's see. We'll go to setup and pump one. Basically, that's my NO3, PO4. And that's um, basically 12 millimeters a day. And then pump two, that's my sulfate. That's 11 millimeters a day. And then pump three is my magnesium, which is 33 millimeters a day. And then we go to pump four. Hold on, whoops, let's go there, pump four. That's my acro power, 15 millimeters a day. And then five is iodide, which is zero, it should say zero. And it says zero because it's not being dosed. It only gets dosed every two weeks. And then number six is uh, number six is alkalinity, which is two. And uh, no, so number six is boron to be uh, mistaken. Yeah, boron. So that is two millimeters. Uh, the seventh one is alkalinity. I remember that. Sorry about that. So the seventh one is alkalinity and that's three millimeters. I thought it was two millimeters. No, it's three millimeters a day just to keep things stable. So that's what I'm dosing. That's what I'm dosing in this system here. And um, I plan to upgrade the computer system, the, the monitoring and control to uh, Profilux. I still just haven't had the time to do it, but I plan to do it. And yeah, so once again, I'm gonna try to save this little guy here and see what happens. But you know, the tank is doing fine. You know, this tank is an old tank. It grows out coral. I take it out and then I give it to my LFS or I sell it online and sometimes I'll sell like some really big rocks or some pieces and this is all live rock but now that live rock is so scarce and so hard to get you know I'm gonna see it I'm just gonna get myself you know because I, I did get a frag tank so I'm gonna get myself a, what is it a bandsaw you know to start cutting and I want to try to save some of this live rock and I'm gonna you know dip it but then put it back into a sump and in you know without having all the critters and if it takes out the you know the um the copepods and all that with it then so be it but i want to save my live rock like real life rock you know so i want to try to save some of that so i can put into my other system because it's still going to be attached even when i do the upgrade it's still going to be attached to this system so there still might be some pests here and there and stuff but it'll be much cleaner it'll, it's gonna it's gonna do well it'll do fine it'll do fine i know what i'm i i just want to say i just know what i'm doing you know do an icp test 
then uh, adjust accordingly, and then do another ICP test within a few weeks down the road and adjust accordingly. And then you can start doing the math. If you do like three ICP tests from like every month's time, and then you can actually understand what is it that the consumption rate is in your system, and then you have an idea of what you actually need to dose. Because I also dose vanadium. And I dose vanadium, I dose 0 .0... 0 .01, uh, yeah, 0 .01 in vanadium in this tank, and then it's 0 .01 in the office tank, and vanadium is 0 .0, like, uh, close to 0 .01, uh, 0 .02, I don't want to say 0 .02, in the, um, in the other, in the other tank, in the bedroom tank. So, you know, this tank over here is doing great. And you can see here is doing fine. The growth is going good. I took this guy out. This is gonna be for Arlene. Arlene wants this piece here. She wants those zoas and she wants some utter chaos here. You can see some utter chaos right there. And um, you know, everything's doing fine. Everything's doing great. There's my Achilles tank, beautiful fish that guy look at that beautiful guy yep and you can see he's a nice clean Achilles very healthy you know and he's got like a little one spot two spot of ick spot or something but they never actually go full blown with ick um, it's just the way it is you know they're surgeon tanks I love surgeon tanks I have all I don't want to say all four but I got the Achilles I got the gold rim, I got the powder blue, and I got the powder brown. And, um, you know, it's just a beautiful thing to look at. I got a guy tomorrow coming over tomorrow to pick up some frags. And he's actually been calling me every, almost every day. He wants to get another uh, frag of Zoas. He picked up some utter chaos from me from the other tank. And these, look at this big old colony of utter chaos right here. And I'm gonna break these down into frags and sell them for like like a nice bundle of 20 for like 10 bucks and um well about 15 bucks yeah i've been posting them for 15 so i just want to say 15 and then like anything below that is like about 10 bucks or something you know and you can see look at this guy this little cluster and you can see it's got little red bugs right there and stuff and you know i always dip my corals and i always make sure when i get that frag tank going basically going to be like a quarantine also so i'm going to dip before it goes in there and just make sure that whatever comes out of there gets re-dipped again before i even give them out to anybody see my golden torch right there is doing well see the other head right there on the side growing and um tank is doing fine tank is doing great it's my leopard rassy just to remind you surgeon tanks are awesome awesome and they do need flow but surgeon tanks do better when you have a very well established system. You know, you can get an un, you you can have a surgeon tank and a brand new tank, but the thing is is that a brand new tank means having the basically all that microfauna and all that other all, 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 basically you're just going to have to have everything that's needed for a surgeon tank to do well. They stress out easy. You got to have hiding spots, you got to have caves, you got to have a little bit of everything to have surgeon tanks. If you want them to do well, you want them to stay living long, you know, I, I always say have a well-established tank before you actually put one in a new tank. Uh, a new tank can create stress and, um, you know, create those ick outbreaks that you don't want. You know, I can go into more further detail, but we'll talk about that another time. So let's go ahead and look in the office tank right now. Now we're in the office tank. Now you can see my leather coral right there told stool is still getting picked on he was just having its polyps out but still getting picked on and um i don't know if it's the fox i don't really don't think it's the fox um i think it's the powder blue or it might actually be the midas blenny the midas blenny has been you know acting up a little here and there it's just getting really close this is his little area here so you know uh, sometimes i think it may be him right there you know you can see where he swims he swims down right there see how he goes past the leather coral and you know it's, sometimes i just wonder 
just wonder. But um, this tank is doing well. And this tank operates in the same method like the living room tank. It's got the geo calcium reactor. And I think I went into detail in the last video and stuff on what I dose. And basically the dosing regimens are the same. Um, the lighting, once again, is Kessel. And um, you see I got the AP700s and the 360X. I leave one lid off just for oxygen adjacent just for some more oxygen, sorry about that word, oxygen to get into the tank. So, you know, I can kind of keep the pH stable where it's at. You know, windows are always open. Um, just, uh, it just creates better stability, you know. You just want to make sure you got enough airflow in the system. I, don't, I, don't, I just don't like systems that are just fully capped, kind of like the one I have in the living room, but it's, you know, it's stable because the other tank is uncapped, so. Other than that, clam's doing fine. You can see there he is right there. A little bit of hair algae still, but it's slowly going away. And you can see there's my tuxedo urchin right there doing its job, just eating it away. And, you know, snails do help, you know. Turbo snails do help. Astrea snails do help when it comes to eating algae. You know, you might get some guys out there on the tube saying, oh, snails don't eat algae or they don't eat this. It's a waste of time to even put them in there. They won't go after big hair algae. And that's true in a sense. But if you pluck it and you kind of, you know, do your part by trying to pull some of that off, they'll actually go for the stuff that actually has been more, you know, loosened up for them. They won't go for like a big old jumble of crap like that. But if you had something loose like up there or loose like right here, they actually go for that they go for more of the looser stuff so get your hands in there pluck that shit out and then whatever's left the snails will actually go for it and clean the rest of the rock work they'll do their job but you got to do your part too so when they say snails uh won't go after the algae won't go after this they're wrong you know i've just heard recently on one youtuber talking about snails and you know if i if i, if I want to go more blunt you know, it's like um, saying somebody putting in like 200 snails ain't going to do shit. No, they'll do something. If, if you don't help them out, help out the situation, they won't do anything. But you got to get in there, pull out some of that hair algae, loosen it up, and they will go after it. And you'll notice in a day or two, you'll notice a lot of that algae has gone. It's gone. You're going to be like, oh shit, they did eat it. But then again, then, the con then, then what's going on with the consumption rate, right? They got the snails got to feed on something so now you got to start taking some of those snails out because they got nothing to feed on they'll die and if you got too many crabs in there that are going to be going after the snails you know they'll release toxins and all this other crap and it's going to create instability so once the snails do their job try to take most some of them out take them back to your lfs or see if you can sell them online or whatever but you don't want to keep a whole shitload of snails in there you see i got my little groups and it, i don't got too many just enough to do what's necessary and the tanks uh basically is the powder blue you see he just nibbled a little bit the fox face does good too he nibbles at it too look at there he goes nibbling at the hell you see so you know it, it's just a matter of just having what's needed you see the hair algae over here is basically the nun okay but i do have a window right here and it tends to draw the light like right into this area here so but this tank is doing well, doing good. Things are growing. Guy's coming over tomorrow to pick up these frags here. He wants some uh, Rost, I mean, Utter Chaos, and I'm gonna give him some of those. And, you know, he wanted a piece of Monty Cap, so I fragged out a little piece right there for him, and it's on that frag plug, so I'm gonna give him that piece right there. And, you know, I'm gonna sell him that piece right there for like 10, and that big old cluster of Utter Chaos for 15. And if he wants some of those digis, because he did pick one up last time, I give him those out for like five to 10 bucks, depending on what size it is. And um, he said he wanted some Nephnia. So he wants some green Nephnia. I give that out for free. He said he'll pay me for some. I'm just gonna give it to him for free like last time. He said he got one, but he lost it in the back of his coral display. So I don't know, maybe he put it in some rock and it fell, fell behind somewhere and he just can't get to it. But. He says he really thought it was cool when he had it and now he wants to get some more. Hey, Kona.
<laughs> right. Yeah, you want to play, huh? <laughs> so let's go in the bedroom tank now and um, let's see what's going on with that tank. All right, so now we're in the bedroom and yep, Kona followed me in. <laughs> but uh, this tank is doing awesome, doing great. Now this tank does not run on a calcium reactor once again. It's red C, A, and B. It's um, magnesium, it's sulfate, it's boron, it's nucleus for trace elements, it's, it's all of the above. I got red C 90s, three of them, and I got two 360Xs for illumination. Par levels are about 400 and, oh, that just brightened up. It just went up because it's, I guess cloud cover mode was in. But there's 400 about here, about 300 here, from the center. And then you got about 200 to 150 towards the bottom here. So about probably 150 here to probably 200 about probably this area here. But it's lumin it's it's illuminated pretty good. So you want I want to say like about 150 here to 200 here to 300 center to 400 up on top. So you know corals are doing great. Once again, you can see a little bit of hair algae here and there, but nothing to be too concerned about. You know, tank's doing awesome. Corals are doing good. You can see my Walt Disney in the back there. Beautiful. Little nub of Walt Disney back there. Still just a little nub. It takes, you know, somewhat, sometimes it takes a little while for them to start growing. And um, that little top shelf aquatics frag right there is doing good. Uh, there's my, what is it? Sexy Orange Passion, doing really well. Encrusting. And there's my Cherry Bomb. Encrusting, doing really well. And there's a Vivid Acro, and there's the Red Planet. And you can already see the Monty Cap is already in coach, is already basically just growing in on both these aquafags or whatever you want to call them, the SPS coral. Hey, sometimes I, I forget the names, okay? <laughs> you know, but um, it is what it is. And then you got this purple Cadillac he was telling me. It's not a pink Cadillac, but it's a purple Cadillac, you know, right there. Basically that's, um, I don't know if you can see right, right there, right there. And you got these guys here, which are doing awesome. Maleficent. Some crusting all over the rock work there. Green Slimer. And there's my Powder Brown. Beautiful fish, man. You know, when I got him, he was really thin. And his mouth was a little, was a little messed up. He had like a torn lip or something and me and Arlene said hey you know what let's save him we wanted to save him because we thought nobody would actually purchase him and we purchased them brought him in and you know a few videos back I showed you him and now he's 100% healed from the mouth and uh, now he's nice and fat and doing really well and you see how clean he is he's got no ick no anything he's fine he's living life and he's appreciating where he's at you know he loves it. He likes it. If he didn't like it, he would be dead by now. He'd say, fuck this. Oops, sorry for my swearing, but <laughs> he'd say, I'm gone. Oh, that's Odie bark. Odie howling. It's uh, a Malamute dog that we got in the back. Um, But corals are doing great here. And, you know, if you want to see what the dosing regimen is in here, I'll give you guys a little look. And um, I have not upgraded anything yet. See, look at this, still with the Reef Keeper. Okay, Digital Aquatics, oh man, where are they? Jesus. But um, let's see, so if we go here, okay. I'm gonna go here and we're gonna do this. I'm gonna show you what I'm dosing. So 
basically pump one is uh, the Red CA calcium. That's only 10 millimeters a day, okay? 10 millimeters. And now we're at the B part, which is the alkalinity. That's 26 millimeters a day, okay? Just to keep it where it's at. And the uh, alkalinity in this tank is at a, what is it, 7.9? 8.8.0 8 last time I checked it which is still okay for me but um, I did uh, increase a little bit of the alkalinity just to see where it's at so I might want to say it's at an 8.0 now 8.1 who knows but I will test it again but there's 26 millimeters a day there okay um, magnesium 36 millimeters a day to keep it at 1250 close to 1300 also Okay, and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna go up to four, which this one goes to, I think it's, um, let me make sure we're all on the right track here because sometimes I forget. Oh, yeah, it's boron. So number four is boron, okay? So that goes boron. There's boron is two millimeters a day, okay? Pump five is iodide, which should say zero. Yep, zero. Because I only dose iodide every twice a week now. And stuff from what I did my ICP testing, there was no reason to do any from when I did the math, there was just no reason to dose iodide every day or even weekly. So it's every two weeks is just one millimeter in my systems. And um pump number six. Let's see if I remember that goes to sulfate, yes. And sulfate is 14 millimeters a day in this tank okay and if we go to pump number seven that's acro power that's 25 millimeters a day jesus christ but that's uh yeah that's acro power in this tank 25 millimeters jesus sounds like a lot okay and that's it and the new yois which is right here Oh, which is in the back. Oops, sorry guys. So the new yos is in the back there. So these two in the back here is basically the manganese and the potassium, which don't get dosed. Okay. Now this one right here, I forgot to put is the nopox right here. Okay. Which is the NO3 PO4. Alkalinity management. Let's see. Let's just see how much of that. So let's see. Here we go. Oh, oh. Let me get back into it. Sorry about that. Just went out. Okay. There we go. Okay, so number 11. So there's 14 millimeters a day of the NO3 PO4. And let's go back to the new yoys. Should be about two. Yep, two. There's two. For the trace elements so that's new york's trace elements and then pump nine should read zero yep zero because it's not dosing anything and pump eight should read zero zero yep because it's not dosing anything okay so we're just going to put that back and let the system do what it's doing but that's my dosing regimen in this system okay so i just showed you everything that i dose now it doesn't show vanadium because i dose vanadium manually now i'm gonna show you guys something really quick okay but um just to let you know this tank is doing well and if we go down in the sump see the protein skimmer here's the nitrate reactor same method oh yeah and all systems do have the uv sterilizer which is simple uv sterilizer just the coral life hobby grade nothing nothing too fancy but it does the job it works and um I got live rock right there and I actually put some more live rock in there because I'm going to start uh, seeding Arlene's tank with some of this live rock. So I put some extra rock. Actually there's some care of sea rock right there. So we're cycling that rock because um, we're just going to make it easy for her to get her tank going. All right. But quick look at the tank once again. Tank's doing awesome. You can see I got little frags of more zoas over there everything's doing cool 
I mean, these are starting to grow out there. You know, it's just, it is what it is. Hey, Kona. So, SPS squirrels are doing great. Everything's doing great in this tank. And um, let me just show you a little quick something. Okay, guys, so these are my elements. And this is what I show, a Kona, yeah. So, basically, this is the type of um, magnesium I use. I use the B-ionic magnesium. I use ATI supplements for boron. You can see there's boron there. I got sulfate, which is the triton elements of sulfate. There, there. For iodide, I use Brightwell Aquatics. Uh, well, that's, mag that's actually magnesium right there. This is actually emergency. Sorry about that. But iodide, I do use Brightwell Aquatics. There it is. Brightwell Aquatics. Um, you can see I have calcium in case I need to dose calcium. Okay. And I do have that. And then I got some manganese in the back there. I got more boron. What's this? I got potassium here. Brightwell Aquatics potassium. In case I need it. I got bromine in case I need it. Okay. Bromine. I got... What is it? Let me start taking some things out. I just want to show you guys. Because I have things. So in case I do ICP testing, I want to just dose what I need. I got strontium and there's some more manganese right there and then there's some what is it uh, fluoride in the back fluorine sorry not fluoride fluorine and there's that and let's see I got a lot of stuff in here now I got all these new noise trace elements look at that active elements okay and um, with these, you want to make sure that the lot isn't expired. So you just look on the bottom there. I don't know if you can focus in on that, but it says 2022. Okay. So that means that these are good. There is an expiration date on these elements. They break down over time. So just remember, you can't keep them stored away forever and use them forever. So I got zinc. I got vanadium. I got nickel. I got molybdenum. I got, there's some manganese right there. What else do I got? Zinc. Lithium. Cobalt. And just a little bit of uh, leftovers. Okay. So just showing you a little bit of something of what I got. And then I got some Acro Power here. And that's it. That's all my stuff. You know, so a little bit of something, a little bit of everything. And that right there is basically just more sulfate. Basically, this was some of my emergency stuff that I picked up in case of not receiving any triton, triton sulfate. Because of the pandemic, I wasn't being able to get everything that I wanted to get. So let's just put everything back here. Hey, make sure it's all nice and clean. Other than that... That's what it is, guys. You know, so those are my elements. Let me close this up. Dogs here. Once again, tanks are doing awesome. Tanks are doing great. This is just a little bit of a quick look, but um, coming back here to the living room tank, this SPS right here is the only casualty of war. And, um, you know, uh, other than that, everything is good. I'm going to try to frag them out, try to save them. Fish are doing great. Tanks are doing great. Life is good. Knock on wood. Hope everything stays not only stable with the tanks, but with me as well. And um, this is the Herm just saying, you know, patience and stability is the key. And um, hopefully uh, you like this video and I'll be posting another one soon. But we're going to do a part two on our wings tank. And that will be coming up soon because this weekend, this 4th of July weekend, we're going to start putting it together. So look out for that tank, uh, that uh, video soon. So anyways, guys, peace out. Have a good one. Have a happy 4th of July weekend. And um, yeah, peace.